demonstrate a simple example of cost flow using FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. Really simple example, going to be an extremely small grocery store, and I'm going to start the uh, period October the 1st with one loaf of bread, $2, that I paid for it, the grocery store, and I'm just going to make a purchase of one additional loaf of bread, again, small grocery store on October the 17th at $2.25. Now, my goods available for sale is beginning inventory plus purchases, so it would be two units, but the cost of those goods available for sale would be my $2 beginning inventory plus $2.25 purchase is $4.25. My goal is to divvy that up and divide that up between cost of goods sold, the actual cost I'm going to assign to the unit sold, and I'm going to assume that I made one sale of one loaf of bread on October 15th. Again, keeping it simple. Between that and ending inventory at the end of the month, October 31st. And again, just keeping it really simple. If I had two loaves of bread available as a sale and I only sold one, I must have one loaf of bread left. Now, if I use specific identification, I would track which unit I sold. Was it the $2 unit or $2.25? And obviously, if I'm a small grocery store selling this low volume of inventory, that's probably practical. Uh, for many companies that are selling hundreds or thousands of units, even on a daily basis, that's not practical. And so they have to come up with an assumption of how their cost is going to flow through the system. It doesn't necessarily mean it matches the physical flow or actual flow, but just an assumption. One of those available assumptions is called FIFO, which is first in, first out. So the assumption with FIFO is the units I'm going to sell first, the first out, are going to come from my earliest or first in purchases. So here, I assume my cost of goods sold, my one unit I sold, is going to come from the earliest or first purchases October the 1st at $2. That's going to be my cost of goods sold. So therefore, my ending inventory, if the earliest units are sold first, must come from my latest or most recent purchases. So ending inventory would be valued at the October 17th purchase at $2.25. So this assumption probably registers with you the most, you know, as a consumer, you might think, well, this seems to fit the grocery store example where they're trying to rotate the shelves and get rid of the oldest stuff. We can make other assumptions, though, and that might be LIFO or last in first out, which is going to go in the opposite order. Here, our first out or our initial sale, we're going to assume comes from our last our last in our most recent or latest purchase. So we assume that the first unit that we sold, and we only had one sale, is going to come from our latest purchase on October the 17th at $2.25. So therefore, what we're left with, and this is counterintuitive, must have come from my earliest purchase, which is my October the 1st inventory of $2. Again, reverse direction, cost out, my latest purchase at $2.25, ending inventory is going to be at $2. Now, you, I, I will also note, you may look at this and go, this couldn't even physically have happened because you can't sell on October 15th a unit that you didn't buy until the 17th. Keep in mind, these are cost flow assumptions. They may not match what physically happened, but it's an available assumption that I can make. You might also ask, who does this even make sense for? You know, I, I can register with a grocery store example and stock rotation. Think of a gravel company. You know, uh, trucks come in and dump new loads of gravel. And when they're going to pull a load to take to a customer, they're not going to dig down to the bottom of the gravel pile and be able to pull out the earliest purchases. No, they're probably going to take the latest or most recent purchases. So this may be a good fit for a company like that. Our third and final cost flow assumption is going to be weighted average. I simply just listed again the cost of goods sold for FIFO and LIFO and ending inventory to the sides just for a comparison. We've already went through those calculations. Um, FIFO went uh, earliest to latest. LIFO went latest to most uh, to earliest. We're not going to go either direction with weighted average. We're going to smooth out those fluctuations. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, take, add together the cost of my beginning inventory of $2 plus my purchase at $2.25, average it out by dividing it by the number of units, 
one plus one, because we only have one unit in each area, is going to be an average of $2, 2.125 per unit. Now, again, you'll say, I mean, I didn't actually buy either of these at 2.125, but I'm just trying to smooth it out. So my cost of goods sold and my ending inventory is both going to be valued at the 2.125. I'll make another note. Keep in mind, this is weighted average. So I had a very simple example where I only had one unit in beginning inventory and one unit in my purchase. And so I, you didn't see the weighting. The weighting part would be, what if on October the 17th, I actually bought five loaves of bread? So I'd start out the same, you know, one unit at $2 in beginning inventory, that's the same, but I'd have to wait the $2.25 by the fact that I bought five loaves times five, add that all together in terms of cost, then divide it by the new number of units I had available, which would be my one unit plus the change that I'm going to make and buy five here. And so I would have had a weighted average of 2.208. You'll start to see that in a later video, a more complicated example, but I just want to explain that. The other question you might have is, again, who does this even make sense for? Because again, I, this average cost doesn't agree with anything. Well, think about, you know, a company that sells chemicals, you know, not like the loaf of bread where we can keep those separated and understand the difference between those. We're just going to get a new batch or a new load of chemicals. They're all going to mix together. And so it may make sense to use the weighted average costing to weight out all those fluctuations in a business like this. The last thing I want to do is just do the comparison. I've already done the calculations for cost of goods sold and ending inventory for FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. I'm just showing the comparison here. I also have gross profit listed, so let me explain real quick. Uh, you're already familiar that gross profit or gross margin, same uh, different term for the same thing, is sales minus cost of goods sold. So I'm just going to assume in this example, that the loaf of bread that I sell, the selling price was $4. So FIFO gross profit would be $4 selling price minus $2 cost of goods sold that we already calculated, gross profit of two. Uh, LIFO, $4 selling price minus $2.25 cost of goods sold is a gross profit of 1.75. Weighted average, $4 selling price minus 2.125 is going to give me a gross profit or gross margin of 1.875. Now, I will also stress this is an example of rising prices. What I mean is we started with a lower price of $2 and it rose to $2.25. In a situation like this, I can make some statements that are, will always be true in a situation of rising prices. In a period of rising prices like this, FIFO will always produce the highest ending inventory value. Well, look here, you're like, hey, I can prove that with numbers, but think about it. FIFO says cost out the cheaper stuff first when it's rising prices. And so what we're left with is the more expensive stuff because prices are rising. I can also say in a period of rising prices, LIFO always produces the highest cost of goods sold. Why is that? Because LIFO goes backwards. It costs out or list is cost of goods sold, my most recent or in rising prices, my largest price of 225. I can also say in a period of rising prices, FIFO produces the highest gross profit. Again, I can look here and say that that's true. Why is that true? In a period of rising prices, again, FIFO first in, first out. Well, the cheapest stuff is getting costed out first at $2, so cost of goods sold is the lowest. If cost of goods sold is the lowest, then gross profit or gross margin is going to be the most expensive. Weighted average is always going to smooth out any price changes. It's always going to have ending inventory, cost of goods sold, and gross profit somewhere in the middle because it's smoothing out all the fluctuations. couple additional items. FIFO will always produce an ending inventory value that approximates current replacement cost. Again, keep in mind, FIFO cost out earliest stuff. What I'm left with is the most recent, uh, most recent unit. The most recent unit is the what I'm probably going to have to pay to replace it so it better approximates current replacement costs. 
On the other hand, with my uh, LIFO, better matches current cost and cost of goods sold. Again, LIFO is going to cost out my most recent purchase first. My most recent purchase is better realistic of what I'm going to have to repay uh, if I need to buy more units. So it does better matching with cost of goods sold. More detailed videos demonstrating each one, but this will give you a nice overview.